from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And we are together again on the radio. Well, look at this story, and I'm fascinated with this because I'm sure uh, one thing I know about is every guy who listens to this show eats at least some fast food every week. Forget all the research, forget all the claims by doctors, forget all the steez guards and salad bars and fruit salads and all that stuff. Come on. That is what the fatty females of America eat while trying to convince the rest of us they're on a diet. Real men like real food. Real men eat real food, and we get a lot of our food at a fast food joint. That's where we go. Now, I'd be lying to you if I told you that uh, despite my hefty income, if I pretended I did not know the difference between the chicken at KFC and the chicken at Popeye's, were the chicken nuggets at McDonald's and the chicken nuggets at Wendy's. Or the $6 burger and the double Whopper. I'd just be lying. I'd be lying. I hit all of these joints. I've hit them frequently. And I uh, am not ashamed to say it. When I first came to L.A. 20 years ago in May, when I first came here to to work, that was a time when everybody in L.A. was saying the same thing. This phrase came from everybody. I don't eat red meat. I mean, I heard that from every single person. I don't eat red meat. In the early days when I first started making that big whopping paycheck that I made from from coming to L.A., the biggest revenue radio market in America, I was going to open a restaurant called Red Meat. Forget calling it, uh, you know, so-and-so steakhouse. I was going to call it Red Meat because everybody says they don't eat red meat. And I was anxious to prove that they do. They just say they don't. Now, let me read to you from this story. We've talked about Hardee's, which is in the Midwest and the Southeast, and Carl's Jr. before. And by way of disclosure, let me tell you that for years I owned the stock of the parent company, CKE Restaurants Incorporated. I owned that stock for years. So uh, here's the story from the Associated Press. The operator of Car Hardee's and Carl's Jr. restaurant chains has already introduced fattening sandwiches and salads that pack enough calories to fuel a sumo wrestling tournament. Now the company is breaking new boundaries, this time for sloppy eating. CKE Restaurants Incorporated has unveiled a new line of cheeseburgers and french fries that will be smothered in chili and sold at its Carl's Jr. chain. And by the way, Carl's Jr., and I love Carl's Jr., but they're not the first to do this because all the locals here in L.A. know Tommy's 
was the first chain, although it's not nearly as large as Carl's Jr., to just lather on huge heapings of chili on the hot dogs, hamburgers, and french fries. In fact, they all heap on uh, chili and cheese and, you know, uh, jalapenos, whatever else you ask you to put on there. They'll just lay it on. But now it's going to be at Carl's Jr. French fries and hamburgers smothered in... Uh, I'm, I'm cheeseburgers and French fries, they're going to be smothered in chili. That's the deal. Says here, the company says most restaurant chains avoid the chili-laden dishes because of the mess they create at the drive through window. <laughs> Not to mention the car. <laughs> Have you ever tried eating a chili dog in your car? Huh? Holy cow. But it says here the Carpinteria, California-based firm is betting that its core market of hungry young men will help it buck a trend, regardless of the stained upholstery and clothing that might result. CKE Chief Executive Officer Andrew Puzder said there is only one way you can make a chili burger, and if you made it so you could eat it at the drive-thru, it wouldn't be any good. Says here, the messy burgers are in line with CKE's strategy to give consumers what they want, not what they think they need. The strategy is exemplified by the company's monster thick burger, a decidedly unhealthy sandwich that packs 1,420 calories and 107 grams of fat. The product helped revitalize the ailing Hardee's chain. By the way, Hardee's looks just like Carl's Jr. It didn't used to. But uh, Carl's Jr. bought this chain in the Midwest and the Southeast. And they started refurbishing all the locations. And now the logo looks just like Carl's Jr., except it says Hardee's. Uh, they use a lot of the same advertising, except it says Hardee's. If you go to YouTube, you can see many Hardee's commercials. And if you know Carl's Jr., you'll recognize the spots. So it says here that the product, uh, the Thick Burger, helped revitalize Hardee's, even as other fast food chains focus on adding salads and low-calorie sandwiches to their menus. Positive said CKE's strategy to lure new consumers is to release a new product every three to four months, rotating the offerings between the Hardee's and Carl's Jr. chains. The decidedly over-the-top offerings, some boast meat as a, quote, condiment. That was a Jay Leno line about Carl's Jr., have generated buzz on late-night talk shows and grabbed consumers' attention. Positor said, we seem to increasingly hang on to these customers as the years go by. While the focus on fat has boosted CKE's value since 2001, the company's stock has been on a slide this year, dropping from a high of $23.24, that's $23.24, to close at eleven ninety four last Wednesday. Like other restaurant chains, the firm has been hurt by higher food and packaging costs, mainly from price increases in bakery and dairy products. Puzzler said the stock price has fallen in part because it was inflated earlier this year by speculation the company would go private. He said a boost at same-store sales ought to show investors the firm is still on a solid growth track. So there you go. By the way, the... Uh, The company says, I guess they're not kidding, uh, the new product line has been approved by the Dry Cleaning and Laundry Institute. <laughs> says here, the institute recommends any silk or linen garments that get chilly state should be dry cleaned immediately. No wonder they approve. Now, honestly speaking, and I've made reference to this on the air before, but I want to talk about this. You know, there are an awful lot of people out there. Uh, these are the uh, do-gooders out there, the Center for Science and the Public Interest and uh, other, uh, you know, tree huggers and such, uh, who think that uh, this is irresponsible, that food like this should not be served, that Americans are dying of all kinds of maladies, obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart failure, whatever. And so it's incumbent upon places like Carl's Jr. to start serving yogurt or, you know, b b uh, peach wedges or, uh, uh, you know, fruit cocktail. But, but come on, who goes to a place like Carl's Jr. to eat a salad? 
And I might add that um, I don't even know if Carl's Jr. sells salad, and if they do, it's probably a taco salad, which is not exactly a salad. Okay. But have you ever eaten the salad at your average fast food place? You know, they put salad out there, and they do what they have to do to, to garner positive public attention. But the bottom line is that what fast food places do best is meat, and lots of it. There's nothing more American, and I tell you, as a, as a world traveler, there is nothing more American than a fast food joint. And if you don't believe that, you need to see all the fast food joints that are in Europe. American fast food joints that are bulging with people. And the prices at McDonald's and Burger King and other fast food joints are way higher in Europe than they are here. And there are lines out the door. The whole world wants to eat this food. And I must say that although I enjoy being in Italy, eating prosciutto and having little uh, thimble-sized cups of coffee, I love being in Spain, eating ham or you know cheese or drinking Rioja wine or whatever. You know, every once in a while, you have to, uh, for example, when I was in Rome near the Spanish Steps, I saw the Golden Arches right near the Spanish Steps in Rome, and I had to go in to see what was going on in there, and it was humongous. It was one of the biggest McDonald's I've ever seen, packed with people and murals on the wall of guys carrying picnic baskets with bread and cheese and little bottles of wine, and of course, at McDonald's. That's not what they were serving. Well, there was something, uh, something soothing about seeing it. I mean, I just loved it. I think there's a lot of hypocrites out there, but I certainly don't think it's the job of a fast food place uh, to have to uh, to do what's politically correct. I, I, well, what I love about Carl's Jr., and by the way, I just love fast food in general. Going back to the early days of McDonald's, when it was called McDonald's System Corporation. It was called McDonald's System because it literally had an assembly line, kind of like the original Model T Ford. The way they assembled hamburgers and then wrapped them and then stacked them. It was truly a system. And then made six milkshakes at one time with the milkshake machines of Ray Kroc, who eventually bought McDonald's. Fascinated with that whole history. I am. History of Carl's Jr. too. You know, Carl's Jr. was originally a hot dog vendor in Anaheim. Back before Disneyland, folks. So I've uh, I've read up on the history of the fast food joints, and I'm fascinated with it. I just uh, I can't get enough of it. It's an all American success story for all the uh, amazing people who founded that business, who invented the drive-through window, and. Um, you know, all the various permutations of fast food that we enjoy in this country. But um, what I really like about Carl's Jr. is that they've just decided to go another way. They said no salads, no fruit, no health food. It's meat with meat on it. And um, I wonder if we have any of those, uh, you know, those guilt. And by the way, I'm a libertarian. Uh, I know you've got those guilt-ridden liberals out there. Who uh, think that uh, you know places should just be responsible, or they, they what they consider to be responsible, and they should uh, serve you know strawberries and raspberries instead of meat. I wonder if we have any listeners like that. Boy, I'd love to talk to one, but uh, I'm sure the vast majority of them are meat eaters, like us. And uh, I'd really love to get your opinion. Talk, talk, talk. Like this. Like this. 1 800 5800 Tom. What do you have against women? Nothing. My manhood, future. It's the Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Likes Show. 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Let us say hello to Justin on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom, what's going on? Uh, not much. I hear you're talking about uh, fast food restaurants today. Yes. 
this hour. So you think that they should only serve unhealthy fast food? I think they should serve whatever they want, but I don't think people go to fast food restaurants to eat fruit. Okay, well, what if you're going with with someone who's going there to eat the burger, but you need a healthier solution? How about that? Well, I think it's up to every individual fast food place to do what they think works for them. Now, McDonald's does that. Right. And uh, they they feel that's the right thing for them to do. And if that works for them, and they do have a large number of women who go in with their kids and what have you, uh, then fantastic. But then you take a place like Carl's Jr. or Jack in the Box, mm -hmm. both of which are targeting young males. And when I say young males, we're talking about a demographic of 12 to 34. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really make sense for them to try to cater to women. No, not really. They, you know, the don't bother me, I'm eating strategy. You know, and the the Jack in the Box has been going has been going on about you know offering rewards of like motorcycles and stuff, which isn't doesn't, wouldn't necessarily appeal to women. In, you the know, target in audience is not families; it's guys. Right, and you know I agree with you that the restaurants should have their choice as far as well. They have their choice. Uh, the, right. the idea is there are people out there who say that fast food joints have some responsibility to serve healthier oh, okay. food, and I say no, they don't. You're right; they don't. I, I do think it's a good idea for them to have that because as far as, you know, taking a step in the right direction is concerned, that's definitely the way to you know, go. Why, 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 should fast, why would someone go to a fast food restaurant to eat healthy? Well, I, I already – oh, they wouldn't. I, but I gave you an example of someone who does like to eat healthy, how they would end up in a fast food restaurant. Perhaps they just have no time during the day because, you know, 30-minute lunches at work. All right. Having, well, they having should go to McDonald's food. or Wendy's where they have a salad bar uh, or Burger right. King. They should go there. Right. Well, okay. Well, the, you know, I agree. But with I that don't. So th much. But there are people out there who think every fast food place should be selling healthy food. Okay, I misunderstood because I'm not one of those people. I was saying I'm pro. I think it's a good idea. I don't think that everyone needs to do it. I don't think it's a good idea for everybody. I think Carl's Jr. would be making a big mistake because their whole thing is having large quantities of meat on a bun, drippy, sloppy stuff that drips all over the place. Uh, their their reputation is, is not uh, serving cantaloupe. <laughs> yeah, they have meat with meat on the side. They have meat with, with meat, meat on shape. top. Meat with meat yeah. on it. That's what they do. Yeah. No, uh, and by the way, they they were brilliant. They did it at exactly the time when some fast food places were running. They were running from 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 scrutiny, and they said, "We're going to do the opposite. We're going to we're we're going to put meat on top of meat." Yeah, I remember. When everyone started doing the ad, you know, McDonald's was including the Atkins friendly, and then they went to the salad, and the, I remember that. And then so they just they just refused, and they're still they're still running strong. That's good. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, they why should they go from that strategy? No, I mean if it works, then that's definitely fine. I think Del Taco's taking the same approach as well. And Del Taco's audience is the same audience, young right. guys. Same Who with Taco Bell, now? young guys. Yeah. That's not a family meal. You don't take your family out there. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I guess it depends on your family, but yeah. Yeah, well, if your family, uh, you know, uses gang signs and wears certain colors, maybe. But <laughs> if your family is like two parents and some kids looking right. for little toys that come with the food, Taco Bell is not your place. Well, Tom, I, I appreciate you having me on the show. You take me out to the ball game, please? Take you out to the ball game? Yeah. What What would that be? I don't know. You could take me out and then play the "Take Me Out to the Ball Game" song. I don't know if we have the "Take Me Out to the Ball Game" song. Do, do we have anywhere like just a ball hitting a bat? We have that. Here you go. There we go. <laughs> take me out to the ball game. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Anthony on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, great to be talking to you, my man. I'm sure it is. Definitely is. All right. Um, definitely like the subject. I completely agree with you. This past summer, I was in, uh, I spent like about a month in Europe. When I was in Madrid and Amsterdam, I completely un understand where you're coming from. I saw the Golden Arches, and I had to go in there to see how it was. And it's exactly how you described it. It was packed. I mean, there was five lines with like 15 people in each line. It was just Packed, especially late hours. You know, nothing really shuts down out there. The bars stay open late. People are drunk, and they love to eat the McDonald's. I had to compare the McDonald's from there to the ones here in America, 
and I mean, I, I'm. All right, and then Anthony, see if you remember this, because I was at yeah. McDonald's in Madrid. Okay. In Madrid, McDonald's sells beer. Yes, they do. I loved it. Oh my God, I had a, a quarter pounder or a Royale with cheese with a beer. It was the greatest thing ever. I, oh my God, I I was I was just dumbfounded. I was amazed, and I loved it. I did not want to leave. I I tried the other food, you know. I tried the local food, and I don't know. It just didn't. By comparison, it didn't you didn't like you didn't food. like eating pig snouts for tapas. Exactly, exactly. I did it. I I really did it. It's just something about the golden arches, a good old, you know. Even though it wasn't America, it wasn't made in America. Just the thought of it being McDonald's, I felt like I was eating in America. It was really reassuring, and I don't know. I I completely agree with this subject that fast food is for men, men who love to eat meat on top of meat with more meat on top of that. That's what it uh, is. I'm a big fan of Tommy's. You know, Tommy Colax, the founder. Yeah. You know, uh, that their motto says it. You know, if it's not the shack, take it back. Uh, my favorite has to be the one on Beverly and Rampart, though. I mean, I know they have a chain several well, times. Well, that's the original, there. of course. You know, and just a few years, I mean, maybe like about 10, 12 years ago, they didn't serve French fries at Tommy's. They, that's something that they also just picked up. I mean, maybe to just attract more customers. But I completely agree with you on this subject, and uh, I just wanted to give my two cents in. I appreciate you having me on, on the show. Uh, could you please take me out? Kobe, a shotgun, and a thank you, Jesus. Here you go, Anthony. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Esteban on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. I just tell, tell you, you are a god for telling me all this. I just tuned into you about half a year ago, and you make perfect sense to me, man. I love that. And I'll tell you, for me personally, I love Carl Jr. There's McDonald's, there's uh, Burger King, Wendy's, all by my work. I choose Carl Jr. because they have so much meat on their burgers. I get the number 12, extra large, french fries, the dessert, everything. I just love it. Yep, yep, and they've been around uh, Southern California uh, for decades, long time. Yeah, I, I I just love it there, you know. Um, all the other places where they, they just bust w- down and started serving the healthy stuff, I just stopped going there, you know. Cause I'm, I'm, it's lunch. Because you're a guy and you want guy food. Exactly, exactly. I want something that's going to fill me up or I can keep on working. And McDonald's doesn't do it, doesn't do that no more. Well, you can't not McDonald's because McDonald's, uh, while while not the original and not the first, I think White Castle was the first national hamburger chain, but um, McDonald's perfected the whole thing. And McDonald's is as good as it gets. I mean, it's as good as it gets. And uh, I like Carl's Jr., but I, I will always have a place in my heart for McDonald's. And I still go to McDonald's, and I'm still amazed at their marketing and their logos and uh, uh, the way they catch on to trends. I mean, you know, I, you know, I'm I'm into American business. I'm into success stories, and fast food is is one of those American success stories. Nowhere else in the world do they have fast food like we do. Nowhere. And the more I travel, the more I appreciate the accomplishment of being in the fast food industry. It's just an amazing thing. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jesse on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Hey, I wanted to tell you, a couple of years ago, I was going out with this girl. And um, every time we went to a restaurant, she would order a, a salad. And it was so annoying. One time I got so fed up, and I told her, you know, after all the ingredients are put together, you know, two packs of dressing, bacon bits, cheese, all of that, you probably have more fat and more calories in your plate than I do in mine. Yeah, that's true. And then after that, I never saw her ordering salad ever again. And then I felt like I was on a roll, and then she she also used to chew a lot of gum, and I told her, you know, you're consuming a lot of sugar, and she started chewing sugarless gum because I told her to. Of course, it, it turned out that I had to DTV her, but it was fun, you know, 
getting her off the patties. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Tom, I'm more of a sourdough jack kind of guy. Hey, uh, don't knock that sourdough jack. Yes. Yeah, don't knock hey, that uh, sirloin sandwich that Jack in the Box makes either. That's good stuff, oh, too. Oh, yeah, it's the best. Yeah. With some, uh, with mm-hmm. some jalapeno poppers. Oh, <laughs> you're speaking my language now, Jesse. Thank you very much, sir. Can you blow me up? I certainly can. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Like It. In this day and age, for a man to get married, he's only looking to lose. It's the Tom Like It Show. Bum. Hollywood, it's the Tom Like It Show. 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. We've been talking about whether fast food joints are under any obligation to provide healthy foods. Look, if they want to do it, God bless America. I think these businesses should offer uh, whatever the people want. I don't care if it's McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Carl's Jew. By the way, I like the way KFC has started to call itself Kentucky Fried Chicken again. Why are you hiding? Because the word fried is in there? Come on, we know what it is. What's wrong with Kentucky Fried Chicken? What's wrong with fried chicken? What's wrong with fried food? Just don't eat like a pig, for God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Patricia on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? You always bringing it to the table, baby. Thank you. I just wanted to tell you, you know, me and my friend were just talking about that this morning. And I was saying I love those Carl's Jr. commercials. They're fixating. Uh, they're compelling. They have a wonderful business model. Uh, the marketing campaign is excellent. Those commercials and that food is full of cheese and meat and sauce and teriyaki and bacon. And it's good. You know, I eat pretty healthy, Tom. I- very healthy, but sometimes, yeah. and I gotta put on my bonnet. Sometimes I got to get ignorant, and when I do, I go to Carl's Jr. I love it. <laughs> the food is great. I mean, it's great. I got to get ignorant sometimes, baby. You know what? <laughs> they don't have an obligation to do anything but keep the bottom dollar successful. Keep their whoever they're dealing with and who they're accountable for, happy. Hey, you want to eat healthy? Go to a PETA networking event. <laughs> but you don't have to worry about going to Carl's Jr. to do that. They have a business model. They've taken a stand. And they that don't bother me, I'm eating campaign. And those $6 burgers, they are a phenomenal success. Who else Why Who else takes a hamburger things? and then some, some onion rings and pours barbecue sauce and ketchup and mustard on top? Who else does that? But Carl's Jr. and right. they have developed that marketing niche, and they got it. And if you got it, keep it. They don't have to be accountable to anybody. Don't bother me. I'm eating. Go oh, and some bacon out. while you're at it. Take you out, how, baby? African tribal style. Of course. Here you go. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Baninge, 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 sopenza. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Jared on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey Tom, long time first time. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, you know, I totally agree with you, man. Uh, Carl's Jr. You know, fat tastes good. Salt tastes good, and that's what it is. It's fast food. That's the way it's supposed to taste. If you're scared of getting fat, hop on a treadmill. Go to Subway. You know, they don't need to change a damn thing. Don't eat it as often if you don't want to get fat. That's as simple as that. So Jared says fat is good. Yes, because it tastes good. That's what it's supposed to be. Don't change a thing. I don't want to eat a salad when I go to Carl's Jr. I want a guacamole bacon $6 burger because that's, that's, it's so amazing. It tastes great. And that's what you need to get there. You know, eat healthy during the week. Go there on Friday. Something like that. All right, Jared. All right, can you take me out with a bong hit, Tom? Sure I can. <laughs> you heard it here first. Jared, big fan of Carl's Jr. Fat tastes good, says Jared. 1-800. Didn't I hear Jared got a divorce, by the way? No, Jared got a divorce. 
Something was not uh, something was not well in Jared Land. Something Mrs. Jared was not happy. I know Dean has seen this story and it'll be in my hands in the next thirty seconds. Right Dean is doing it right now. I knew it. Now, I'm not making this up. Jared was married, and apparently uh, Mrs. Jared had had enough. <laughs> That's what I read. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Greg on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Greg. How you doing today, buddy? Do you care? Of course I do. I'm doing great. Hey, Greg. Glad, glad to hear it. Hey, I wanted to say um, I was in England a little while back, and the funny thing is about fast food there is they call it the American invasion, and I went into tar um. Not well, but McDonald's, and they have, like, McTunturi chicken sandwiches, things that you wouldn't see out here. But the difference is they know how to control themselves and control their eating. You know, you don't have all these people supersizing everything out there. So my suggestion is instead of attacking the fast food companies, maybe they should come up with some kind of a ad campaign that says, ma'am, drop the fork Away from the well, state. you know, and it's the same argument people make to say don't let Walmart come into our town. You know, you ask people what's wrong with Walmart, they say, hey, if we build a Walmart here, people are going to go. They're going to go to Walmart. Yeah. And it's like, well, how about you just not go to Walmart? Yeah, exactly. Show some self-control, for Christ's sake. You know, you don't need to supersize everything. You don't need three gallons of Coke to, you know, swill down your, your burger with. You know, I go to those fast food places, but I still manage to keep my in shape. You know, it's not hard to do, you know, and I don't blame the fast food for, you know, selling their wares because this is America. You should be able to sell whatever you want to. It's what our country was founded on, right? I certainly agree with you on that. And by the way, by the way, here it is. It did take Dean about 30 seconds. This is from, uh, and I believe everything they say because they've been sued so many times now, they have to tell the truth. The National Enquirer. And we know our buddy Mike Walker, who's the gossip editor of the National Enquirer. You know Mike. We know I've known Mike for years. If it's in the National Enquirer, I believe it. This from the National Enquirer. This is an exclusive from the Enquirer. Uh, Jared, the subway guy, Fogel. That's Jared's last name, Fogel. Has divorced the wife who stuck with him through thick and thin, the Inquirer has learned exclusively. Get it? Yes, yes, yes. Elizabeth Fogel, the Subway Sandwich pitch man's wife of six years, walked away with a lot of his lettuce, according to court documents obtained by the Inquirer. Elizabeth received more than $230,000 from Jared Fogel Incorporated, the company Jared set up for his personal appearances. She'll also get 60, 6 0, 60% 60 of the proceeds from Jared's deal with St. Martin's Press, which published his life story. Now there's a gift you'd like under the Christmas tree, huh? The story of Jared. It says here, Jared's father, a doctor, introduced his son to Elizabeth, a nurse. Thanks, Dad. While Jared was in the midst of losing weight off his 425-pound frame. He was a student at Indiana University, and they hit it off right away. Jared lost 245 pounds a year after uh, developing his own Subway sandwich diet, consisting of a 6-inch turkey sub sandwich for lunch and a foot-long veggie sub for dinner. Subway advertising executives heard about his weight loss story after he was featured in an article in his college newspaper. The restaurant chain began featuring him in commercials in January of 2000, and Jared became suddenly famous. Countless television commercials later, Jared is still cashing in on his notoriety, but becoming an overnight celebrity gave him a big head. Better than having a big butt. And caused trouble at home, according to a source close to the couple. Said the insider, he loves being a celebrity. But I think Jared's become too controlling. And seems to have a bit of a mean streak in it. Wouldn't you love to have like, see like a YouTube video of Jared jumping ugly on somebody? Love to see that. Says here, as his marriage to Elizabeth fell apart, their arguments became public. 
The insider said Jared has season tickets to the Indianapolis Colts games. On some occasions, he'd argue with Elizabeth at the games, and she'd be crying. Oh, my goodness. Imagine that. The couple separated in March 2006, and their divorce became final on October 18th of last year. Court papers reveal that, in addition to proceeds from Jared's company and his book, Elizabeth will get 60% of the sale of the home they own. Why, why 60%? Why not 50%? I, I thought community property meant 50-50. See what I tell you about this, boys? Elizabeth will get 60% of the sale of the home they own. She'll get their 2004 Volvo. <laughs> if he's that rich, why is he driving a 2004 Volvo? And substantial portions of the couple's investments and retirement accounts. Since the divorce, Jared, 30, has been dating a series of women who accompanied him to Colts games, and he's now got a steady girlfriend, said the source. It's a wonder he stayed thin, added the insider. At the games, he pours down one draft bear after another, and his favorite food is nachos covered in cheese. <laughs> I love the Inquirer. I just love it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Brandon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Brent. I just wanted to say uh, I work at In-N-Out Burger in Glendale. Yeah. And I wonder what you think about In-N-Out, if you think they got it just right with as much meat as you want. You know, they haven't changed their menu a little bit. We have the protein style. But other than that, I mean, we haven't changed the menu, and it's all meat all the time. Well, In-N-Out uh, has a special place in every uh, every heart of every Southern Californian simply because it's local although it has crept into, like, Las Vegas and some other places, but it's primarily Southern California. And, um, of course, that very simple menu with about ten items on it, uh, and then most of the menu items are hidden. You ha you have to know about them or you can't get them. Uh, and the, the only thing that's ever turned me off about In-N-Out is Bible verses uh, yeah. uh, appearing on the milkshake cups. I, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, but uh, the food, fantastic. In and out. The only criticism I have of In and Out is that it isn't In and Out anymore. It's in line <laughs> and uh. out of my mind is what it is. In line forever, uh, yeah. because I, th I I think all these people ordering four by fours and six by sixes and and uh, the, all the, all the other uh, bizarre combinations is slowing down the line. Mm, that's true. That's true. And so, I mean, if you look at the drive through window at, let's say, the one in Hollywood by Hollywood High School, I mean, you better you better prepare for at least 45 minutes in that line. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that's the negative for me about in and out Yeah. But is it worth it? Well, I think the food is fantastic. I'll put it this way. Anytime somebody, I, I have a friend who calls me up and says, I'm going to in and out do you want anything? The answer is always yes, always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get to avoid the line. Well, if someone else wants to do that, I'm more than happy to to chomp on in with them. Yeah, but I, 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 I will feel bad for everyone across the country that doesn't get to eat in and out, you know, because it's just I don't. Tough luck. They don't live in Southern California. <laughs> Tough. Uh, One of the many things that makes it great to live here is in and out, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yep. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Tom. Brandon, thank you, yeah. Lauren, yeah. on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, oh, my God. Now I'm totally craving in and out it's Oh, horrible. look at you. Yes. <laughs> so what I wanted to tell you about was I went to Italy two years ago, and after five or, like, or six, I don't remember how long, I was craving McDonald's so bad because I had pasta, like, every meal. And it's just you can't eat pasta that much. I And me and my, all, uh, my two friends, we searched. We were in Florence, and we searched for a full, uh, McDonald's, and we found one. And it was it was wonderful. It was so good. I love. Could have been better with maybe In and Out. Well, there's no In and Out in Florence. I was there. <laughs> no, there's not. There was a Burger King though. I don't like Burger King. I just their fries are gross. Everybody has an opinion about fast food. The Tom Likas Show.